So yeah, thank you very much, Tiago, for the introduction. My name is Christian. Um, <clears throat> as maybe many people here, of course, I like Python. That's my only special skill. A couple of years ago, I decided to start joining uh, communities and conferences. I thought, how difficult could it be to organize a conference? It's only sending a couple of emails, right? So then I discovered that it's not. So I really uh, want to thank the organizer for the, this conference and the level of the, the quality of the things that we have been getting so far. It's really difficult. If you believe you can do it better, join any conference and community. You can find me on social media and that's my tag uh, during the talk uh, in case you want to reach out for anything that you see here that it's weird or you're interested into it. So yeah, but this talk is not about me. It's talk about one of my passions, which is CPython. First of all, I did something, and I'm not sure if you will handle that information or that material in a good way or a bad way. It will be depending on you. So yo, everything that I share here, I'm, uh, I do not recommend to use in some of the, the coding production, of course, because you will see things that you will be tempted to maybe. And also, depending on what I show you at the end, I'm not responsible for what you do with that. That would be your own thing, so be advised. The whole point of this talk is for you to try to figure this image here and try to discover what is in the middle. You are, everyone here is used to writing some code, getting some results. But what happened in the middle? Well, that's the key that I want for you to at least after this talk to finish knowing. It's how Python works. So. The main thing here, besides understanding this, is that I want you all to rediscover Python because you use it at some point, but when you understand how things work, the knowledge that you have on that thing is completely different. Maybe many of you here had some, when they were your kids, opening some toys just to see how it works. The same thing happened to me when I discovered how things work, and I expect happens to you all. Brief recap of 3.11 and 3.12. Maybe you heard about, maybe you are using 3.11, hopefully you are using 3.11. You heard about maybe some things called faster Python, exception groups, the terminal leap, fine grain error location search facts, typing features. And if you are maybe checking the what's new section of the Python website, maybe you already know a few of the things that are coming now in October in 3.12, which are per interpreted yield, syntactic formalization of strings improving error messages, and even more typing features. But my question to you is, where are those features? Where are those changes? Does anyone have any idea where those things are? And the solution, of course, is in Python. So now everyone's like, yeah, of course, I mean, you're wasting my time now, right? But now the, the question was not where this change is, but when we are talking about Python, what is that Python that we are talking about? So I do this exercise in some of my talks and I show the following snippets. If you know basic of Python, you will understand what is written here. Can you tell me which one of these is the Python that you are using now? Any guesses? No? You can see some difference, right? I mean, you see in some of those, there are like four uh, greater than, in some of them, weird ones are five. So what is the Python that you're using? <clears throat> you use it every day, you should know, right? That's the tricky bit, right? Python is many things and has many implementations. That's the interpreters as you see there, the Python are using. The first one you see is MicroPython, then it's PyPy, the Python written in Python. Sounds weird, but it's real and it's better sometimes. You have Jython, the Java implementation of Python. <clears throat> you have Rust Python, if you like the Rust language. You have Piston in C Sharp, and you have the vanilla Python or C Python implementation, the first implementation or the general implementation that everyone uses as a reference. So, how does when we are asking the question, how does Python work? We need to be more specific, right? So, the question is really how does C Python works? Maybe you have seen this diagram. There are many talks out there. I really recommend it to how it works when you have your Python code, a little like a print statement. 
And there is a whole process that you need to follow, like decoding, tokenizing, parsing, then the abstract synthesis tree, and then the final compilation step in the Python virtual machine. You saw something last uh, yesterday in the talk when you had all these this module and weird things there. So this is the process that we are used to it. But have you ever looked inside what is happening? I see some nodding, so maybe some people have. So what I want you to know, it's not try to figure out everything that I will type here, but I will show you like a simple way of looking what is inside, right? There is a program in C, don't worry about it, treat it as a black box called GDV that you can use for exploding these weird things. And you need to believe me now that there is a function that I want to break, that's what's the way, the B. So built-in print found something in some weird file. So now I will just run Python. I will maybe download some of the things here. So that is Python, as you know it. But when I use a print, oh, something happened. Something was captured there. Something stopped. I can see what is inside. And without further ado, that's the print function. That's just the beginning of the print function. If I continue listing the code, you will see many weird things, right? Maybe if you are using print in an advanced way, you can recognize these keywords that you can pass to the print set, right? You can do print with a different separ uh, separator file, the end using the fl file, flash, and everything. <clears throat> and also you see these many weird things, stars around, pi objects, pi whatevers, inside a print function. It shouldn't have been simple, right? But it's like full of, and we are not even finished. Like if I continue here, there are like many other, we are still parsing the arguments of the print function and so on, and then we reach the next function. So it's weird, right? So the same happens when with any other module, right? So for example, you know that in the, in if I now completely uh, break like this, so we could do next, next, we can do the steps. But if we, we just quit, if we start it again, I can also tell you that sometimes you have functions for strings. So you may be familiarized with strings, right? I I don't remember much the the, the name of the function. Maybe I will forget, but it's, I think it was Unicode title. Well, I found something. So if I run now Python, and if you have like a string, any string, I do a title. Ooh, something is found there. And then you find that that's implementation of uh, using someone else title implementation. Can you see anything suspicious in the last line there that is a, a new start? There's a method called PT. Anyone knows what PT might stand for? No? We can use help, right? What is doing that? We can check it out. Weird. Did you know about this thing? Is it true? I don't know. And it kind of works. Well, there you go. Give me a token uh, phrase in, in English, a simple one, so I can write it down. Yeah. Simple phrase, perfect. Simple. And you can even, I guess, use other languages as well because it was fine. And I said, Did you know about this thing? Is it true? Because I tell many lies during my talks. So you need to be careful. Weird things happening inside Python. Let's go back to a presentation. Maybe now you're thinking, oh my God, what, what's going on? What is this thing? But don't worry. It's really simple to get there and try to understand these things. So if you go to GitHub, that's the main repository of the Python pro project. So you see there the C Python implementation. You have many weird directories and stuff. In a nutshell, I try to summarize them. Don't worry about it. You can always pick up this slide afterwards. You have the doc, the include with some header files. Header files are just, just think about definition of modules in Python. 
You have the grammar, really important. It's a language after all. We need grammar. You have the standard lib in Python, the standard lib in C, built-in types, and the runtime itself. So we need to talk a little bit about C. How many people here, I will not ask you a question directly, so don't worry, it'll be in the spot, but how many people here know C? Perfect, no hands that I knew. How many people here, for those people, believe that they are C experts? That's the proper answer, of course. <clears throat> So yeah, I want to show you here the first algorithm that I remember, it is not my code, I just quickly went to the internet and I found it, that I remember that I was uh, in charge of implementing, it was assignment in programming class, whatever, bubble sort. If you're not used to C, I want to you to see, uh, no pun intended, uh, this code and try to find some similarities with Python. There are some things that you might recognize. There's a main function that sometimes you can create. You need to put a lot of these int things everywhere. Oh, this receive an int of some weird parentheses, int, int everywhere. This print f also looks like print, but without an f, you know, all these things and are kind of similar to, to Python, right? So we don't need to do that in Python. You can do a equal hello, a equal 42, right? So how does this magic work in Python? The whole a uh, structure of Python or the whole like uh, abstraction of variables, it's in this little struct called pi object. If this is, sounds weird to you, don't worry about it. It's just saying that every time that I use pi object underneath, we know now that it's a struct underscore object. So what is a pi object that is doing everything? Again, complicated code, don't worry about it. All these things are just in case you're on Linux and Windows have a weird version of Xcode or whatever. And uh, But if you are, for example, I'm running Linux here, and if I try to simplify all these macros, it will be something like this. Easy, right? At least the first time that I saw that, I said, okay, I can understand everything that is happening inside. But then I noticed that there was something else called pi type object. And then I checked what was that. And that was inside. I don't want you to, to understand each line there. It, maybe you will not be able to read, but there are many, many, many things. But you have some details that can help you understand what is going on here, why there are so many things. You find here, for example, you will not be able to write maybe, but TPS number, TPS sequence as mapping. So you get an idea. When I say sequence, you already know because of yesterday talk, lists, sets. When you see mappings, maybe you think of dictionaries or number, floating point numbers or integers or something. So it looks complicated, but it makes sense. And I think that the best analogy for me to understand by object is this little piece of furniture. If you put it in your kitchen, what do you fill it with? I don't know, some cutlery, dishes, or whatever. If you put it in your bedroom, maybe you put like what? Like pills or I don't know, some night Googles or whatever. If you put it in your office, documents or whatever. So you use this thing, but you fill it depending on your needs, right? Well, a pie object is exactly the same. Do you need a number? Fill, the, fill it with things that are related to numbers. Do you need a mapping? The same thing. So with that, this brief introduction to PyObject, now it's time to learn C, which is of course the number one goal of any Python conference, right? You come to the Python conference and now you're exposing to learning C. I promise I will be brief and it will not be so tricky. So I want you to look at the code in the left. You all know, know really uh, Python programmers, so you understand what is going on there. Some of you will say, eh, you are using the print version that is deprecated, usually F strings for the wing. It's just for the example. Does this code make sense to everyone? I will not ask you, I just want to know. Does it make sense to you? Okay, so what is the C version of this? That's a C version of it. Some of you will think, okay, that makes sense. Some of you will think that's look complicated with some extra semicolons all over the place. But if I add type annotations to the Python code, is it now so different? The same reason that maybe a C, uh, you as a Python programmer can complain about all the semicolons, maybe someone will complain, why do you put columns be before your variable thing is, right? So it's not so complicated, right? I hope you believe that. So a few more details. This is the part that maybe some of you will start looking into Twitter to see if something happened, if there's some fire or something. But two, three things, not anymore. Integers, in Python, we're used to have integers, that's it. Bye. But in season, you have an, uh, an access to other uh, low-level things. There are like many things besides integers. You have shorts, 
you have longs, you have long longs. And also if you are working with signed or unsigned integer, you have many variations. So you can be really specific of what you're using. Of course, C is a low level language. So you need to have this access. If you're writing something for a microcontroller, you cannot use like a yeah, long, long, whatever. No, you need to be certain that maybe the precision that you're looking is necessary. The same with decimals. You, instead of having only floating points, you have floats, you have doubles, and many other options. It's possible to declare a variable without initializing. So many of you maybe do this thing when they want to just declare something and assign the value later. So you see, you can do it without initializing into node explicitly. And as you can see in the lit example, you, there's difference between declaring something and initializing something. Memory management. It's some one slide. Something that we don't know as Python developers. Sometimes, we sometimes we do that we can do like, oh, let's do a list. They have another list and append whatever we want inside because again, Python objects, we don't care. We can put whatever inside. But in C, it's a little bit different. You need to specify, for example, the first one sounds uh, quite familiar because it's like, okay, it's simple, but then the things start to be weird because you need to do some memory allocation if you want to assign items, whatever. Maybe this code will not compile, so don't worry. And you cannot put, if you say that it's an array of integers, you cannot put a string there. Everything will explode. And of course, since you're allocating memory, what do you also need to do? For the C developers out there, you need to free the memory that you're allocating. If not, you will start to have memory leaks, whatever, whatever. So things start to be a little bit hairy, right? Pointers, really simple, one slide, uh, no, two slides, I promise you. When you declare a variable, like A equal 42, there is in some place in the memory of your computer, and it has a value. So the memory address 1000 has a value of 42. And if I have a pointer to where this thing is being, then that has a different memory address, but the value of that, it's the memory address of the other one. So you can have things that point to each other, right? Sounds simple until you start working with them, right? So if I have the following, you know that at least when B is pointing is the value of A, so it's 42. But then what happened when I have like, C equal to A or D is equal to when B points. This is what you will get, right? Everything is 42 so far. But if I change it a little bit, the outcome, so I, I will not, I mean, it's early in the morning. Don't worry about calculating what will be. I can just show you is this. Because doing equal to things that in the case of C doesn't affect A because there's no reference, no pointers or nothing. So it's different to what we are used to work sometimes. You know, maybe many times that you did something equal to a list, then you send this something and then the, the original list was changed. Weird things can happen. So in a nutshell, this is pointed just for you to understand what is the concept of this star. And last but not least, C is a compile language. So you need to compile. And for that, this is the simple hello world. And then you compile with in your terminal, whatever, with your favorite compiler is just one and then you execute it. So that's it. So now I prepare with the organization your certificate out, down uh, outside so you can proudly say that you learned C, but at least the main concept of C, that it's enough for understanding everything that is happening in this story. So now is the part that I really like because I, I enjoy looking at your faces with uh, how the slides will start to change and your face will start to be like, okay. Who thinks Python is easier than C? I will remember all your faces. And no, don't worry, I will not ask you. For some people, this is complicated. Not everyone knows lambdas, right? Who can understand this? Perfect. What about this? It's a little trick. Who can understand it? Come on, this is level two. I, I wanted to, <laughs> there are like seven levels here. This is weird, you can try it in your computer later on, the slides will be available. You can try it. It's, uh, you know, I will give you a it. okay? Who has any ever done metaprogramming in Python? A few hands, cool. What about this? What did this code do? No, you know. <laughs> I try to usually put this snippet in all my talks. So if maybe you watch some, you will know what. Yeah, homework. What about this? Okay. 
and my favorite because it was an experience, personal experience that I have. I needed to learn. Um, I would do some code challenges, and uh, this is a solution that fit me. If you don't know what it is, it's how to determine it. If n is a power of two, it's valid Python code, by the way. And what about this? No, I just check kidding. This is Python. It's a golfing programming language based in Python, but uh, it's not for this stuff. If you like golfing in programming, you can check it out. That's the Fibonacci sequence, by the way. So all languages can be hard or easy. It really depends how we are using it. So I really would like for after this talk that you don't have this uh, uh, assumption of, oh no, C is too difficult. Yeah, it can be difficult, but Python 2 can be difficult. You can encounter this kind of code there, so. But don't worry about it because CPython helps a lot. All these things that are a little bit weird and uh, quirky in the in C are really uh, simplified in a way by the CPython API. So for example, we we saw before there was kind of a string in C. If you want to create from the CPython API a string, you can do Py Unicode from string. Then you have your Python Py object that has a string inside. So then you can do whatever you want within the C interface, of course, get the length, for example, of a string quite easy. The same with lists. You have already your string from uh, the last example. You create pi list new, pi list append in the list l, the object s. It looks even like Python. I mean, you can read this code and understand what is going on. If tomorrow you are, you know, ask about oh, what is this thing does, you know what is it doing. Maybe you will forget one of the stars here and there, but uh, it's something that is closer to you all because you know Python, so you can follow these things. And even if you want to check, since everything is in this pi object, you know, this our little draw that we need to fill with whatever we have, you have functions to understand, like, is this a string, a list, a dictionary, whatever. So you have all these things. And yeah, sometimes things are a little bit more complicated. You saw already, you remember in the print function that we saw, there were many keyword arguments that we had. Well, here's a kind of a way if you have like two, maybe you are familiar with glob. This is not the real code that just invented it, but. Uh, you have directory and recursive keyword arguments to your glob function. And then you can parse all those things magically in this if statement, and then you get all the variables in this directory and recursive things. So even those steps that in pure C will be like lots of lines are simplified a little bit. So it, it, it sounds more reasonable. It is like more approachable so far. Can you not? Don't worry, not, yes. Okay, see so it's not. So some, just for an example, some freshly served uh, snippets from the CPython repository. Oh, what is, okay. So this is, for example, the uh, list append. If you ever use an append on a list, this is what is inside. And then it's a little bit boring because it's calling another method called pylist append take ref. And that's implementation of that. There's a lot of characters there, but it's not so complicated. You see, first we're getting the size and then we're trying to resize it. And then we are setting the new item. Not too complicated. There are details, I know, I know, but I want you to dismitify that see this, this, this code can be too complicated. And I have a few slides, 219 CPython about objects lifecycle, but we have time, so we can do it. So everything in Python objects lives, uh, life, sorry, are controlled by the reference counting. So it's really simple. So you are using a variable, one reference. You're using it again, two reference. And if they have no reference, then you garbage collected, you destroy it, right? So uh, the use in here has a special star because in some cases you don't need to, but don't worry, it's out of the scope of this talk. Slide number two. Let's do an exercise. I just told you, when you use something, you have a reference. When you're not using, when you stop using it, you decrease one, right? So I have a list here. How many reference that has A? One, right? We can agree that it was kind of, yeah, it, that's correct. There is no tricky question here. Okay, one. And now I'm using an assignment to another variable which we are referring. How many references do we have? And now I'm checking how many references does A has? How many? Don't be shy, I will not, uh, three? Who said three? Who said two? Three, come on, don't be crazy. Two, one, one. It has three. Why has three? Because you use it three times. You're calling a function with the variable. So it also has a reference count inside. So it's this thing which looks 
complicated. When you are debugging reference counting, it can be hell. It's really complicated. You need to keep track of it. But that, I would say, in my opinion, is one of the difficult things of this pattern. Okay, we'll keep the other slides for, for another vocation, of course. The other question is, is this useful in real life? What I am just told you. Well, yes, mainly because of Python extensions. So this is a three snippets of how to create a module in C using the C API to expose it in, um, in Python. You understand most of the things now because you already know C, you have your certificate. So you know the first is a string. There are some other functions there that I'm creating. So don't worry about it. I'm just doing, there is a method called hello that I will register in this method definition structure that it only has one, which is called hello, and it will use the hello function. There is no argument to the, the method. Then we said, okay, we will create a module called PyCon underscore PT that has those functions that we just put there. And then we say, let's create the module. Then you do some tricky things, you compile, and then you can have this. So this literally is what you can use now, tomorrow, to create the super new Python module that it's written in C, so it's faster than Python, right? So you can do it. And also similar things happen if you like Rust. Uh, this is something, my, my personal battle that uh, I would like more people to create C or Rust uh, modules for Python because of course it would be faster. I mean, like sure, you should compile language. So go for it. You can just copy this thing and you have your beautiful Python PT module, of course. But uh, it's not so complicated. And with the material that you have in this talk, you can create tomorrow a little module, maybe just for fun, that creates hello and bye, I don't know. And then that's it, you start doing it. And you can, of course, in CPython, <laughs> it's open source, you can see how CPython does, how, how CPython implement the title function of strings. And you can see the implementation and try to adapt it to your module. So it's not so complicated. So you might say, yeah, but that's a silly example. Is there a real projects about it? And the answer is that, yes. So I work at the Qt company. If you heard about Qt, maybe if you are young enough, you have never, but you have used it for sure. As an example, I tend to use like, uh, I saw many Teslas around uh, in, uh, in Lisbon and stuff. Do you know the beautiful screen that the car has? Yeah, that's written in Qt. It's a software that started in 91. Uh, many appliances, cars, software, if you use Linux, KDE, in the, if you use uh, Windows or Mac OS, there are many tools like VLC to play videos, VLC. No, somebody that's written in Qt. So that's a real example of a software that is written in C++. And at least I work in one of these projects that expose this beast in C++ into Python world. So the project is called PySite and uh, it's a real case. So on my daily basis, I need to read C Python code. That's why I'm trying to encourage you to also look into it. And uh, it's, yeah, it happens in the, in the uh, outside. So it's a real thing. It's not just for this talk, like this weird technical talk that nobody uses anymore. It's real. Many projects out there are using the, for example, if you're, I don't know, NumPy or Pandas, they are based in, you know, Fortran or C. So all these people need to deal with this. Kind of things. So um, as I told you already, it's not simple. And, uh, but don't worry about it because all this manual process that you do, you can, Kind of like be helped by binding generators. And uh, yesterday night, I had a discussion in, in some restaurant. There was a person that really liked tables. So if you like tables as well, I don't like tables, but uh, this is a list, a summary that at least the tools that I experienced, and uh, you can check it out. I highlighted the green one, which is the one that I am developing with many people, of course. And the red one, because we know Rust is so popular. So in case you want to do your Rust project, you can use those things. So these whole snippets that I show you with the hello and Python PT module can be simplified quite a lot if you're using one of these binding generators. But this talk is not about binding generators, right? So then I thought, what can Python do for the Portuguese community? We already saw that Python has the PT module, right? So I thought, what else can be done? So lists, we know how to check if an element is in a list, right? So if I want to check if three is in the list, what do we write? In, no, but uh, we talk about Portuguese, right? So you can also program Python in Portuguese. You can check that. And of course, I 
I don't know Portuguese very well, only a few words. So I thought, ah, but I have the PT met method already. So how do you say while in Portuguese? In quanto, okay. So I can say in quanto. Limit. Okay. And they have the, because also you can have Portuguese Python, right? But who uses while loops? I mean, let's be honest. Everyone use, but I don't understand what it's for. It's para, I mean, the para, right? Okay. So we can, of course, do, how do you say range? Inter, well, uh, yeah, I know. I, I think it's, it was tricky to me to get rid of this part because I, I did it wrong. And then you can, okay, let's do the simple one. How do you detect if a number is pair? It's pair, sorry, sorry, it's, it's pair. It's even or not. So you say, you know, yeah, you need to check if the number. And then you can increase the X. And I am not sure if this is A. How do you say part? No, okay. And you get the numbers. So yeah, you can have Python in Portuguese as well. But the question is not really what can Python do for particular community, but after all the things that we discussed in this talk is what can you do for Python, the community, the local community, the language, and everything else. So thank you very much. That will be my talk. <laughs>